What's up guys, welcome to GT Content. The reveal of the C8 Corvette Z06 showcased the LT6 engine. It's rather odd compared to the rest of the LT family and there's some background that you may not be familiar with. So let's get to know the LT6. The LT6 engine name isn't actually new. It's been used in past Oldsmobile, Chevrolet and Buick cars such as the early 80s Cutlass, Malibu, Monte Carlo, and Regal. Don't get too excited and go junkyard shopping because the LT6 at that time was a 4.3 liter V6 diesel engine producing 90 horsepower and 170 foot pounds of torque. Other than the LT6 name, there is nothing in common with the one found in the C8 Z06. Another one to add is that even though the Z06's LT6 is part of the current LT family of V8 engines, it is a totally new design, not sharing anything other than the 4.4 inch bore centers. In a sense, it should have been called something else, but GM can be confusing at times, just like how they resurrected the current generation 5 small block V8's LT name in 2014 to now, which was already used in 1992 to 1997's Generation 2's LT1. And let's not forget that LT4 was also used from 1996 to 1997 in the Generation 2. And I'm not done guys, because those Generation 2's reference back to the 1970 to 1972 Generation 1 LT1. Are you confused yet? Well, you can thank GM for all that. From what I know, there are 26 letters in the alphabet and they could have used any other two combinations, but for some reason, they like the letter L and they like the letter T. During development, Chevy referenced it under the internal codename Gemini. The name is Latin for twins and references NASA's Gemini space flight program from 1965 to 1966, which only carried two astronauts on each of the 10 missions. The twins analogy refers to the twin cams, twin throttle bodies, twin high pressure fuel pumps, and more. The LT6 was a quote moonshot itself because they weren't too sure on whether they would be able to build it to meet their goals, which we now know they did since it's one of the most powerful production flat plane crankshaft V8s in the world, surpassing the likes of Ferrari, Porsche, and Ford. When you're looking at the exterior of the LT6, you may notice these little Easter eggs of rockets that can be found in various places. And you might also be surprised once you open up the engine and find that various parts on the inside also have these markings, which reference back to the Gemini space program. The Z06 isn't the first Corvette to use the LT6. The first one to use it is the C8R, which can be found racing in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championships GT Le Mans class. The LT6 and the C8R, though, was restricted to 500 horsepower and 480 foot pounds of torque due to racing regulations. It uses an X Track 6 speed sequential gearbox compared to the Z06's Tremec 8 speed dual clutch transmission. The LT6 in the Z06 produces 670 horsepower and 460 foot pounds of torque with an 8,600 RPM fuel cutoff. That's 170 horsepower more than the C8R. And being derived from the C8R race program should provide us with assurance of the performance and reliability of the LT6. I got my fingers crossed on this one because I'm just hoping for the best. Please machine it correctly so there's no valve drop issues like the LS7 or correct whatever the problem is later on with a revision or a recall. The LT6 is hand built at the GM Performance Build Center in the Bowling Green Assembly Complex. After assembly, a special plaque is placed on the intake manifold with the builder's name. As far as what's controlling everything, it's the GM E68 ECU controlling all the parameters to make the LT6 alive. The C8 Z06 returns to naturally aspirated power just like previous generations except for the C7 whom broke tradition with the supercharged 650 horsepower LT4. And to make up for that the LT6 makes 670 horsepower which is 20 horsepower more than the C7 Z06. Diehards will be reminded of the C6 Z06's 505 horsepower naturally aspirated 7 liter LS7 and its 7000 RPM redline, but of course the LT6 is in a league of its own. The block is made of aluminum with forged pistons and titanium rods which are attached to a flat plane crankshaft which gives this engine its character. 
A cross-plane crankshaft is typically used on traditional V8s, with the exception of the LT6. It uses a flat-plane crankshaft, which is lighter because it doesn't use counterweights and its design naturally balances itself, making it possible to operate higher in the RPM range while giving the LT6 its unique sound. <laughs> The LT6's firing order is 14387652, while the LT2's firing order is 18726543. You can see the differences here, and that's what makes the LT6's sound unique. The mindset for the LT6 from conception is lightweight, and it's applied to a majority of the components. There's also special diamond-like carbon coatings to prevent wear and protection of certain mechanical parts. You do have to be cautious with a flat plane crankshaft because it naturally vibrates, which can become an issue. So there were additional improvements made to critical items to withstand these vibrations, like longer bolts, adding additional material, and revised heat shields. The LT6 uses a dry sump oil system, which should maintain 80% of the oil at all times while still providing enough lubrication for the rest of the engine. The LT6 uses aluminum heads with a dual overhead cam design. There are four valves per cylinder with dual valve springs for each. Other than reducing valve float, another benefit with dual valve springs is that if one breaks, the second one may end up as a backup to prevent further catastrophe. The intake valve material is titanium for weight reduction and the exhaust valve is sodium filled for heat management. You typically find these materials in performance engines, otherwise you'd have to buy them aftermarket and that's if they're even offered for your engine. The finger followers are modified to spray oil where they meet the cam for additional lubrication. The solid lifter system typically needs adjustment, but GM states that the one in the LT6 is a zero adjustment system by design, which is pretty cool, but we'll have to find out if this is true or not. The intake port and combustion chambers have been CNC ported for the best airflow characteristics. This is a race motor by design, and we'll see what the aftermarket can do to improve upon it. The LT6 also features electronically controlled hydraulic variable valve timing. This system is used to control valve events on the intake and exhaust side for drivability and performance. It can adjust up to 55 degrees on the intake side and 25 degrees on the exhaust side. There's no variable valve lift technology like VTEC used in this engine. Although it would have been nice, it is not necessary. The LT6 uses direct fuel injection, which sprays fuel directly in the cylinder. There are two mechanical fuel pumps, one feeding each side of the head, and they are both operated by a camshaft, which is located in the center of the engine. The fuel injectors are located on the exhaust side of the head compared to a traditional DFI system. The LT6's design promotes the tumbling effect in the combustion chamber more efficiently as the air enters through the intake valve and the fuel being sprayed on the opposite side combines the mixture. The intake manifold can be described as racing art. I wouldn't mind having one sitting on my dining table just so that I can stare at it. It's designed with two large plenums, each having their own throttle bodies. Internally, there are velocity stacks to increase the efficiency of the engine up to 110%. There's also three communicator valves in between the two plenums that allow air to be shared between both sides for various driving situations. Thinking about past Corvettes, it was very difficult to do this because of the hood line, but now with the mid-engine design, there is ample space to accommodate something like this or more. After combustion, the exhaust gases leave the heads through 421 stainless steel headers, which help eliminate cross-contamination and promote exhaust scavenging. The overall weight of the LT6 is 475 pounds versus the LT2, which is around 472 pounds. If this is true, that's pretty much the same weight with a dual overhead cam engine, which is unconventional because they're typically larger than pushrod engines. As far as dimensions, it's unknown at this time for the LT6, but I wouldn't think it's going to be that much wider than the LT2 because they have the same space constraints. Before installation into a Z06, the LT6 receives a 20 minute dyno break in after warm up to test for any issues. The Z06's LT6 is attached to a Tremec M1L 8 speed dual clutch transmission, which is also used for the standard Corvette's LT2. Assuming the transmission ratios are the same, the difference is only in the final drive. The LT6 will have a 5.56 to 1 final drive, which is shorter than the 4.9 of the standard and 5.2 of the Z51. The shorter vinyl drive should allow for quicker acceleration 
and the 8600 RPMs for higher speeds. The LT6 is one of the most advanced production engines out today. Just when people thought that Chevy was only known for their pushrod engines, they surprised us with a race engine for the street. The best part about all of this is that it has a lower cost of entry compared to a Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini, or McLaren. I'm pretty excited to see this engine come out, guys. Now it's making me more interested in purchasing a Z06, but I gotta wait because I wanna know what the ZR1 has to offer first. Maybe it's 800 horsepower and all-wheel drive, and that would also be sweet. But you know, something all-motor like a Z06 would also be nice. Wow, what a dilemma. That's all I have for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like and subscribe button to support my channel. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below so we can continue this conversation. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.